go check out my video from yesterday December 1st what I'm gonna say next is connected now this man lost his life today for a cause he strongly believed in even though it didn't affect him directly are you curious keep watching all will be revealed and more hello and welcome to my channel my name is Sotomie Afiasimana if you're a subscriber, I appreciate your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing. If you're a returning visitor, I appreciate you dropping by once again. Why not subscribe so that you receive updates of my video uploads? If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel where I discuss events that occurred on this day in history with a view to informing, hopefully entertaining, and most importantly, that we learn lessons from the positive as well as negative events or mistakes of the past and hopefully not repeating those mistakes. Because as the saying goes, history tends to repeat itself. So guys, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, let's get cracking with today's important events as recorded in history. First of all, we shall roll back our blinds to the year 1804. Now this I found quite interesting. It made me chuckle. Now this is Napoleon. Bonaparte. And guess what he did on this day? It seems as though he's about to hand the crown over to the lady who is kneeling in front of him. I'm assuming that's his wife because their attire is very similar. But that's his queen. But he, in front of the Pope, Pope Pius VII, pictured here as well, he crowned himself Emperor of France. You know, usually it's a Pope that does the crowning, but he crowned himself for some strange reason. Maybe did the Pope refuse? I don't know. But yeah, that's how it unfolded on this day in 1804. Napoleon crowns himself Emperor of France in the presence of Pope Pius VII. I guess that was him sort of legitimizing his um, emperorship. Yeah, that's a, that's a new word now, isn't it? Okay, so let's move on now to the year 1859. Born in Paris, France. Georges Seurat, I'm sure you can tell he's an artist, French artist, post-impressionist artist, best known for devising the painting techniques known as chromoluminarism as well as pointillism. So that's Georges Seurat who was born on this day. Of course, I will show you some of his paintings. This is his most famous work. It's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. This was painted between 1884 and 1886. It's a massive painting apparently. I haven't seen the real, the real thing, but yeah, it's supposed to be a very, very big, big painting. Okay, so that's George Seward's art, his most popular painting, which he completed after two years of painting in 1886, but he was born on this day in 1889. And that's a, a book. You could go check it out if it's still in print. Yeah, I love his paintings, pointillism. So, yeah, that's the inventor of pointillism, George Seurat, who was born in Paris, France, on this day in 1859. Now, yes, this was the guy. John Brown, in case you didn't get it right, for those who did, well done. John Brown, yeah, and I did mention that I hinted at this yesterday. It's not as if I knew that this was going to come up, but I did, you know, delve into um, equal rights for African Americans and so on, and how um, if you had a friend who was African um, and you were African yourself, you have two friends, so one is white, one is black. The black one is a baddie, the white guy is a good guy. Who would you support? You know, would you support the black guy just because he's black? Funnily, this has come up now. And guess what John Brown did? For those of you who didn't, who don't know, you know, those of you who may not, you know, you see all white people as evil, you know, I hope this changes your mind. So John Brown, he was an abolitionist. He was hanged on this day following a raid on Harper's Ferry in Virginia. He was born on the 9th of May, 1800, um, was an American abolitionist who said that speeches, sermons, and petitions were accomplishing nothing. 
that, in quote, moral suasion is hopeless. He saw violence as unfortunately necessary if slavery in the United States were to be eliminated. An intensely religious man who at one point studied for the ministry and who effortlessly quoted the Bible from memory in his letters and speeches, Brown believed he was raised up by God to strike the death blow to human slavery. He evinced a good deal of pride in stating that he had seven sons to help him in the cause. Brown said repeatedly that he was following the golden rule. He said the Declaration of Independence, all men are equal, meant the same thing. So again, this is John Brown, if you haven't noticed, a white guy who was hung on this day because he was an abolitionist. Yeah, probably he did resort to violence and he was hung because, you know, he carried out a violent uprising. But he believed in the cause he was fighting for and paid the ultimate price. So, remembering John Brown today, December 2nd, 1942, Enrico Fermi, the guy pictured here. So scientists led by Enrico Fermi conducted the world's first controlled self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction at the University of Chicago. So the day was December 2nd, the university was the University of Chicago, first sustained nuclear chain reaction, controlled as well, I might add. Enrico Fermi, 1942, December 2nd, 1971. This is one that's close to my heart, the United Arab Emirates. So this was the day that the United Arab Emirates was formed by the union of six small emirates on the Arab Peninsula. The seventh emirate joined in February 1972. So now the United Arab Emirates was 1971. If anyone had told you that half a century later, um, it would be one of the leading cities in the world, um, probably wouldn't have believed it. But it just shows that when you have a vision, you have an idea, you have a vision, and you pursue that vision with, um, what's the word now? With focus, you know? Um, you know, I believe that Dubai or Abu Dhabi, which I'm going to show you the next, in the next picture, wouldn't have been as successful as, or wouldn't have grown this rapidly if that country was democratic. You know, um, I did I did allude to the fact that democracy may not be the best form of government for for Africa, um, possibly the Middle East as well, um, because there would be people who's, who would say, oh, you can't build this here. You need planning permission for this. You need this. You need that. You know, I'm not saying planning permission is it's wrong, um, but what democracy does is uh, it brings a lot of bureaucracy as well. Um, the guy who was behind this, I think, is the, the leader of the country. Um, he's, he's, not, he's not a sultan. Is he an emir? I don't know. But whoever the leader is, he had a vision, and he followed that vision to a T. There was no one to pull him back, you know. Um, yeah, it shows, it shows what can be achieved in a very short time. And so Dubai, uh, United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, all these cities in the United Arab Emirates, I testament to what um, we as human beings can achieve if we focus. Okay. Um, next on this day, so the second picture that you can see is Abu Dhabi, which incidentally, interestingly, is the capital of the United Arab Emirates. Dubai just happens to be the largest city and it has the tallest building in the world to date. So. As I recall this in 2020, the Burj Al Arab, the building in the middle of this picture, is the tallest building in the world. So go check out, I'm sure you, you've listened to this, you've seen pictures of Dubai. Some people think it's too artificial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's to be expected, a city that has grown so fast in such a short you know, time. Okay, now let's move on to the year 1981. So exactly 10 years later, 
Britney Spears, American singer who helped spark the teen pop phenomenon in the late 1990s and later endured intense public scrutiny for her personal life, Osborne. Next, we have the Javik 7 Artificial Heart. Now, I read about this years and years and years ago. I was a kid when this news broke. And um, so this was the day that William C. DeVries implanted, or DeVries, spelled D-E-V-R-I-E-S, implanted the first permanent artificial heart in Barney Clark in Salt Lake City, Utah. The aluminum and plastic device was called the Javik 7. So I'm going to show you more pictures. So that is the Javik 7, drawing of the Javik 7 and the human being and, you know, um, okay, some more pictures. Yeah, so, yeah, so if you're, sorry, well, I should have warned you before showing you this, but anyway, it's there now. Hope it doesn't cause you any distress. So, um, sadly, the patient whose name was Barney, he was a dentist, actually, Barney Clark. Um, he died 112 days post-transplant. He probably wouldn't have lived as, as long without this uh, revolutionary um, technology. So the Javik 7 heart was developed by American scientists. I can mention that, I did mention that. His name is Robert Javik and his mentor, William Kolf. Okay, so I'm going to show you Barney first, Dr. Barney, pictured here, this doctor, and that is uh, Robert Javik who developed the artificial heart. It's another picture of him here, so that's him here with his invention, and then his mentor, yeah, his mentor is Willem Kolf. So in 1982, Seattle dentist Dr. Barney Clark was the first person implanted with the Javik 7, the first of artificial heart intended to last a lifetime. Okay, so I'm sure the technology has improved in leaps and bounds and um, operations are pretty much routine today. Last but not least, on this day in 2001, exactly 19 years ago, we had the Enron scandal. Following revelations of massive accounting fraud, Enron filed for bankruptcy protection. The energy trading company was once the seventh largest corporation in the United States. So this was the day that Enron went bust. So you can read what's here. And I will, I'll, I'll read it, you know, for the sake of those who cannot see this. So Enron Scandal 2001. Company, Houston-based Commodities Energy and Service Corporation. What happened? Shareholders lost $74 billion. Thousands of employees and investors lost their retirement accounts and many employees lost their jobs. The main players were CEO Jeff Skilling and former CEO Ken Lay. How they did it. They kept huge debts off the balance sheets. Very, very, very dodgy, very sneaky. And the next, how they got caught. So this is how they got caught. Just trying to centralize my screen, you know. Okay. Um, it tur turned in by internal whistleblower Sharon Watkins. High stock prices fueled suspicions. Interesting. Fun fact, Fortune magazine named Enron America's most innovative company for six years in a row prior to the scandal. <laughs> very innovative, very, very innovative indeed. On that note, guys, we have come to the end of today's Today in History. So join me tomorrow for Today in History for December 3rd. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you've learned a thing or two from our history, our collective history as human beings. Um, so see you tomorrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share as well, subscribe. That would be very nice. And when you do so, click the notification bell so that you receive updates of my video uploads. Until tomorrow, hasta la vista.
Bye-bye. Stay safe.